Next center field, number seven, Corey Kyle. And at right field, number 50, Nate Sullivan. Behind the plate, number 11, Sam Conley. Designated player, number 19, Shelby Newsom. And right field, number 10, Hannah Williams. At first base, number 18, Mackenzie Piper. Pitching in the circle for the Lady Indians, number 21, Bailey Springfield. At third base, number three, Olivia Burns. At second base, number nine, Madison Carnes. And at shortstop, number eight, Boots Reed. Ladies and gentlemen, please rise and remove your hats for our national anthem. stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight for the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming and the rocket's red glare the bombs bursting in air Gave proof through the night that our flag was still there. Oh, say does that star-spangled banner yet wave? Or Get a choice pawn loan on things you already own, like guns, boats, campers, trailers, recreational vehicles, and just about everything else. Get a loan from Choice Pawn in Fulton and Tupelo. Get cash today. ChoicePawn.com. At Food Giant, serving you is our number one priority. We offer the freshest produce, highest quality meats, tasty baked goods, and the best meats and cheeses in our deli department. At Food Giant, you'll always find a staff member eager to help you find exactly what you need. Freshness, variety, value. Shop Food Giant today with several locations in North Mississippi. Gotta be hoops and wings. Nah, subs. Wings all day. How about a sub? Dude, wings. Nah, 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 nah. Really? Gotta have ice cold Coke. I'll drink to that. Now that's how it's done. And welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, as we're just moments away from that Renaissance Bank opening pitch here between ICC and Northeast. As we got a full house here in the ICC broadcast booth as Northeast also broadcasting today. Blake Long of Northeast will also be keeping stats. You can follow those live stats. Uh, they're on DaxStats.com. We'll actually retweet that for you now. If you are away from your computer, can't watch the game, but want to keep up with those live stats there as well. So it'll be game one between ICC and Northeast. The rivalry returns to Fulton. As ICC and Northeast getting set to open division play for both teams, actually. As this game we said, we're originally scheduled for Wednesday, but Mother Nature had different ideas on this game there. So it'll be Paige Deal, the center fielder, leading things off here for the Indians, or excuse me, for the Tigers. You see the infield is going to be adjusting in as we're going to try to do two camera angles this afternoon 
here for today's broadcast. So something we're trying to do a little different now. First pitch on the outside corner, good for a strike. That first pitch coming the way at 12.55. So the infield's in, especially on that left side. As this is Paige Deal, the center fielder, leading things off. That pitch going to miss outside for a ball. Evens it up now at 1-1. One and one. This is the first game of two this afternoon here in Fulton. A absolute beautiful day for softball here in Fulton as we await the pitch. This one fouled straight back. And now the count goes one and two here on Deal. Bailey Springfield getting the start here for the Indians in game one. We'll take a look at some of her Sonic stats. She's five and one on the year inside the circle. She's a reverse transfer from Delta State. She's given up 39 hits, 16 runs, nine of those earned. Is that pitch missing low for a ball? She's walked five, struck out 25, has a team best 185 ERA. Lee Adams out there taking photos for ICC Images. You can order photos there at iccimages.com. So Springfield getting set to deliver the 2-2 pitch. And it's right down the middle for a strike, and that's going to be a Renaissance Bank strikeout. The first of the game, and one out now. Number 19, Brianna Tarpley. And now this will be Tarpley coming up. Tarpley is the third baseman. So she will dig in with one out and nobody on. Tarpley swings at that pitch, can't catch up with it. And misses for strike one. We'll be trying to adjust our cameras throughout the day as it goes without saying that uh, the sun is shining bright. Something we're not used to here in the North Mississippi area over the last, through, last two or three days, I should say. So 0-2 now is the count here on Tarpley after fouling that one off. 0-2 is the count with two outs, or excuse me, with one out here in the top of the first. So Springfield set to deliver that pitch, missing high and outside for a ball. One and one now is the count. So one and two with one out. Tarpley, the third baseman. And swung on and missed for strike three. The ball gets away, though, and the throw down to first is in time. Let's take a look at that on the Little Caesars replay there. Strike out the second of the game, two to three on the putout. And now second strikeout for Bailey Springfield. And so now this is going to be Shakira Wilson, the second baseman, at the plate. Wilson takes that first pitch across for a strike. Springfield is dialed in early here for the Indians. Shakira is the second baseman. She will dig in here with two outs and nobody on. Top of the first, scoreless between ICC and Northeast. Now we do know this now. Northeast has got some pop in their bat. As that pitch across, missing low for a ball, one and one now is the count. But yeah, they can uh, they can hit the softball. They can knock the cover off of it as well. So don't expect a couple of low scoring affairs this afternoon in Fulton, especially if the Indians want to try to find a way to win this one. They're also gonna to have to produce at the plate as well. So one and one now is the count with two outs. That pitch missing low for a ball. Two and one now is the count here to Wilson. So we've had back-to-back -back Renaissance Bank strikeouts from Springfield. And so 2-1 is the count. Bailey will dig in. Awaiting the pitch. Swung on and missed. Couldn't hang, catch up with the high heat that time. Count even is up at 2-2 two two now here on Wilson. 
So Wilson's going to step out and gather herself here with two balls, two strikes, two outs, nobody on here for Northeast in the top of the first inning. So waiting the pitch here from Springfield. 2-2 two -two is the count, two outs. Nobody on here for the Tigers. Springfield gets set to deliver. Misses outside, now the count goes full to Wilson. So Wilson, a pretty good at bat right now, being patient, picking and choosing her pitches, has forced the count to go full. So the 3-2 pitch coming here from Springfield. And there's strike three. Springfield gets her looking at one there, and Bailey gets a three-up, three-down inning all on Renaissance Bank strikeouts. A good start to the contest there for Bailey Springfield. No runs, no hits, no errors. We'll step away and come back with the bottom of the first inning. We're to be Childs, Sullivan, and Conley do up for ICC. But before we do that, let's hear a few words from our sponsors and be back with more right after this on letsgoicctv.com. Hmm. I could get the extra most bestest with the most cheese and the most pepperoni for six bucks. Or I could get a pizza with less toppings for more money. Get the most cheese and most pepperoni for the nation's best price. Little Caesars Large $6 Extra Most Bestest. Pizza, pizza. You could say it's about the clubs. You could say it's about the ball. You could even say it's about the course or the weather. But what it really comes down to is consistency and hard work. Over and over and over again. At Renaissance, we understand consistency. We understand hard work. Most importantly, we understand you. Renaissance Bank. Understanding you. Quarter pound junior double cheeseburger with crispy golden tots for just $2.99. Makes me kind of want to do a double take. Double the beef. Uh, double the cheese. Double the smiles. Oh, uh, yeah. For a limited time, get a quarter pound junior double cheeseburger and tots for just $2.99. This is how you sonic. And welcome back as we get set to start the bottom of the first inning. It'll be Corey Childs, Meg Sullivan, and Samantha Conley all up to here for the Indians. As that pitch missing high and inside for ball one. Corey batting four four or excuse me, batting three fifty-three on the season. She's a sophomore out of new site. That pitch across for a strike, even the count now at one and one. Well, as you see, the infield in anticipating the slap hit here out of Corey. She is a pretty speedy leadoff batter here for ICC. Swings on the first pitch she sees. Ground ball to second. It's going to scoop it and toss it over and get the put out. Four to three for those of you that may be scoring at home. So four to three on the put out. First out of the game. And now up is going to be the right fielder, Meg Sullivan. Sullivan has been swinging a pretty hot bat for ICC this year. She leads the team in home runs with three. She is batting 500 with a 861 slugging percentage. First pitch just up a little bit, and the ball one is the call. ICC breaking out their red uniforms. First time we've seen those this season. So Sullivan takes a look at that pitch high for a ball. 2-0 now is the count. This is Mackenzie Denton, who is in the circle for Northeast. She's 2-1 on the year. She'll also be the flex player in the lineup. That pitch inside and quickly ahead in the count now is Meg Sullivan, 3-0. Interesting to see what uh, ICC will let to do here. Are they going to have it where she has the red light, or are they going to give the power hitter the green light here? And the red light was on. Takes that one across for a strike. 3-1 now is the count. So awaiting the pitch. Ground ball, third baseman gets to it, but they're going to call it a foul ball. So only a strike there to Sullivan. And so she'll come back and do it over again. 
So a nice job by Denton to battle back here and make the count go full at 3-2. We're scoreless here in the bottom of the first inning. Sullivan pops this one up. Second baseman's going to come in. Good pitch to Jam Sullivan that time. And the putout will be out number two. So quickly two away now, and this is going to bring up Sam Conley. Number 11, Sam Conley. As Samantha Conley will dig in here with two outs and nobody on. The freshman catcher takes a look at that first pitch high for a ball. Pretty normal infield standing here for Northeast. Third baseman is in in front of the bag across the way. Conley does have pretty good speed, but also can hit for power. First pitch goes for a ball. Second pitch just missing low for ball two. So 2-0 is the count here. Didn't fail behind on Sullivan, the previous batter. Was able to get a pop-up to second to end the inning. That pitch just a little up and out for the umpires. Liking 2-1 now. Or excuse me, 3-0 goes the count. So I thought they called one a strike earlier, but instead it's 3-0 now is the count here on Conley. So Conley trying to get a two-out rally going, takes that pitch across the whole way, across for a strike. So Denton that time just took a little bit off of it, made sure she got it across in the zone, and 3-1 now is the count. So 3-1 is the count with two outs and nobody on. Bottom of the first, scoreless between ICC and Northeast, and there's ball four. So that pitch missing low, and Conley will get the free pass as she'll head down to first. Shelby Newsom. And now up will be Shelby Newsom in that DP position. She'll be coming off an ankle injury uh, that sidelined her for about two weeks. Had a pretty good uh, showing against Sneed State last week, trying to uh, spark a little two-out rally here for the Indians. Swings on the first pitch she sees. Hard hit ground ball. Gets through a diving duo at third and short. And a big time hit there as she just swung on the first pitch she saw and was able to put that one in the outfield. So a nice job that time by Newsom. And the first hit of the afternoon belongs to Shelby and ICC now trying to get something going. Two outs and runners on first and second. Now what will be the left fielder batting in the five spot, Hannah Williams. Williams, a sophomore out of Neso Neshoba Central. She's from Philadelphia. Swings the first pitch she sees. Gets underneath the glove of the pitcher, but a break there for Northeast as the second baseman found it and was able to put a tag on Newsom before she could dive out of the way. So they get out of the inning with no damage done there. So we've played one. ICC, no runs on one hit. No errors and two left on base. We'll step away and hear a few words from our sponsors and come back with the top of the second right after this on LetsGoICCTV.com. Itawamba Community College presents the 22nd Annual Bluegrass and Gospel Concert benefiting the ICC Foundation on Saturday, March 3rd at the Davidson Event Center in Fulton. This year's performers include the Isaacs, Rhonda Vincent and the Rage, Aaron Wilburn, Christy Miller, and Doyle Lawson and Quicksilver. $20 general admission and $30 reserve seating can be purchased online at iccms.edu slash concert. Doors open at 2, music starts at 4. For more information, visit iccms.edu or call 862-803 that's the ICC Bluegrass and Gospel Concert on Saturday, March 3rd in Fulton. This broadcast of ICC Athletics is being presented by the ICC Alumni Association, the Bank of Oklahoma, the ICC BSU, Choice Pond with locations in Tupelo and Fulton, Buddy Long and the Tupelo Coca-Cola Bottling Works, Food Giant, the ICC Foundation, your Etiwamba County Farm Bureau agent, Joey Cox, Little Caesars, Renaissance Bank, Sonic, and the ICC Wesley Foundation. And welcome back as Springfield takes up her final warm-up pitches here. ICC and Northeast scoreless. After one complete, the first of two games this afternoon here on Let's Go ICC TV.
So we move now to the top of the second inning. The previous inning, it was Deal, Tarpley, and Wilson. They all went down on back-to-back-to-back. -to -back -to -back. Renaissance Bank strikeouts. So it'll be Wallace, Castillo, and Jones to lead things off here for the Tigers in the top of the second. Wallace taking her time now, digs in, set to go. Takes a look at that first pitch, missing just a little low for the umpire's liking for ball one. 1-0 one -oh is the count here. No outs and nobody on as we start the top of the second inning. Wallace is the DP, batting in the fourth spot. That pitch, again, missing low. 2-0 and oh now is the count. Got third base in, a step. Middle of the infield is about a step in front of the grass over at short. Looks like Carnes is actually in the grass a little over there at second. That pitch, fastball, clips the inside corner of the paint for a strike. 2-1 and one now is the count. Well, if you're on campus watching, we do encourage you to come down to the ballpark. It is an absolute beautiful day here in Fulton. A little chilly, but you can get a light jacket and enjoy the afternoon. So 2-1 is the count. Springfield's pitch is inside for a ball. 3-1 now is the count here to Wallace. So Wallace being a little bit more patient than we saw some of the previous batters in the top of the first. The DP now trying to... Find her way on base. ICC got a walk and a base hit in the bottom half of the inning. Just could not do anything with them with two outs. So awaiting the pitch. And fouled off. And now 3-2 goes the count. As Wallace just trying to fight that one off to keep the at-bat alive. So 3-2 is the count. As the count goes full here on Wallace. See if Springfield can make it four in a row Renaissance Bank strikeouts here for the transfer out of Delta State. Awaiting the pitch. And lost it. Went a little high that time. So a full count walk is issued to Wallace. The first walk of the afternoon issued by Springfield. And the first base runner on the afternoon for Northeast, and now it will be the catcher, Tiana Castillo. As she will dig in with the runner on first and no outs. Scoreless contest. We're in the top of the second inning here in game one. So the catcher will be wedding. Swings on that first one, misses high, misses on the high pitch. Runner looked like she was thinking about going. Maybe a hit and run situation that time as she kind of half heartedly swinged at that one. Strike one is the call on the swinging strike. So, runner on first with no outs here for the Tigers. A little change up, and that was a beauty. Froze the catcher at the plate and quickly ahead in the count now is Springfield at 0 2. So Wallace, the DP, reached on a five-pitch walk, or excuse me, six-pitch walk, I should say. 0-2 is the count here. Fastball missing outside. Not a bad spot to miss that time with the throwaway pitch to see if you couldn't maybe get her to chase one. One and two now goes to count here on Castillo. So no outs and a runner at first. Their outfield is shading her to her left is the center fielder, Corey Childs. So waiting the pitch here. One, two pitch coming. And that one missing outside. Two and two now goes the count. Trying to get her to go fishing on some couple of those pitches. Just couldn't get her to chase one down that time. And now the count evens up at two and two. Two balls, two strikes. No outs and a runner on first for the Tigers. Scoreless. Here in game one, we're at the top of the first. This one popped up and out of play, so we'll stay at two and two. So two balls, two strikes on Castillo. 
See a few fans out there in left field and the bundled up in some of their chairs. Not a warm day, not a cold day, just a chilly day when that wind blows. That pitch drifts high. Three and two now is the count. Good job by Castillo to battle back now and force this count to go full. So 3-2 is the count. Castillo had fell behind in the count. 0-2, oh, but has battled back to make the count go full. Swung on and missed for strike three. Good job by Springfield. That is her fourth strikeout of the game, brought to you by RenaissanceBank.com. Renaissance Bank, understanding you. So now with one out in the inning, the runner stays at second. And this is going to be Jones, the left fielder, at the plate for the Tigers. One out now, top of the second. We're scoreless. So waiting the pitch shows Bunt, lays it down nicely. Only one play, and it's over to first. A nice sacrifice Bunt. As Burns comes in, tosses that one over. Advances Wallace to second. Of course, when we talk about those sacrifice bunts, we talk about the ICC Baptist Student Union as they remind you of the ultimate sacrifice paid for our sins. That's the ICC BSU. They meet Monday nights at 7.07 as well as Wednesdays at lunch. All they ask is bring $2 and a friend. That's the ICC BSU. Number five, Kelsey Gerhardt. So now with a runner at second and two outs, it'll be Kelsey Gerhardt the shortstop at the plate trying to spark a two-out rally first pitch across for a strike as the umpires got a pretty good zone it's being consistent on both teams right now but we've seen it from time to time shift left to right so the first pitch across 0-1 is the count two outs and a runner on second the shortstop, Gerhardt at the plate. Awaiting the pitch. Takes a look at that one. Borderline pitch, missing and low for a ball. One and one now is the count. Some of the ICC faithful thought that was strike two. The umpire indicated that it was low. Good take that time by Gerhardt. As now the count evens up at one and one with two outs. And a runner on second here for the Tigers. So awaiting the pitch, this one fouled back for a strike, and one and two now goes the count. Kelsey Gerhardt, the shortstop, if she were to reach it to be Lexi Brazil, the first baseman, the number eight batter, on deck. ICC just trying to get out of this inning with no damage done here between ICC and Northeast scoreless in the top of the second. Pitch coming, and oh, a beautiful pitch, but just a little too high for the umpire's liking. Thought that was a, thought that was a strike across the letters, but instead the umpire said it was up a little too much. And so now the count goes two and two. Two balls, two strikes, two outs, and a runner on second. Deuces wild here in the top of the second. And there's strike three. Great job that time by Bailey Springfield as she gets her fifth Renaissance Bank strikeout of the day. And it's a big one to end the inning and end the threat there in the top of the second. No runs, no hits, no errors. One left on base for the Tigers. We're going to take a break and come back with the bottom half of the inning as ICC trying to get the bats fired up here. Back with more right after this on Let's Go ICC TV. Com. This broadcast of ICC Athletics is being presented by the ICC Alumni Association, the Bank of Oklahoma, the ICC BSU, Choice Pond with locations in Tupelo and Fulton, Buddy Long and the Tupelo Coca-Cola Bottling Works, Food Giant, the ICC Foundation, your Etiwamba County Farm Bureau agent Joey Cox, Little Caesars, Renaissance Bank, Sonic, and the ICC Wesley Foundation. You could say it's about the clubs. You could say it's about the ball. You could even say it's about the chorus or the weather. 
But what it really comes down to is consistency and hard work. Over and over and over again. At Renaissance, we understand consistency. We understand hard work. Most importantly, we understand you. Renaissance Bank. Understanding you. And welcome back. Now as we move to the bottom of the second inning, ICC Northeast scoreless. As it'll be the six, seven, eight batters due up here for ICC, Piper, Springfield, and Burns in the bottom of the second. Is that pitch missing inside for a ball? Well, you're starting to see some chunks of dirt come up in the batter's box as some of the players are tossing those out. Of course, considering the rain that we've had over the past two days, you got to think the softball field is in excellent condition. Grounder to the shortstop, bobbled it for a second, but was able to find it for the putout for out number one. Six to three for those of you that are scoring at home. Nice job that time by Gerhardt. Ball took just kind of a little funny hop on her, but was able to come back and find it. And so now up is going to be Bailey Springfield. Here for the Indians. Springfield getting the start here in the first of uh, getting the start here in game one. She's five and one on the year inside the circle. Trying to help her own cause here. That pitch missing low for a ball. This is Denton in the circle for I or excuse me for Northeast. So 1 0 is the count. Springfield pops this one up and out of play and will now even at the count at one and one. So one ball, one strike, one out. Is that pitch across for a strike? as we're having a little problems here is that ball is going to drop for a hit for Springfield and she's going to turn that into a double. But uh, stay tuned as we're having some issues with our wireless here as well. Number three, Olivia Burns. So a double there. So we're going to try to make some adjustments here. As this pitch popped up, center fielder drifting back, back, and it's over her head. Ball is going to drop, and that's going to score a run. So the Indians get a break there, as that was Burns who gets a double, back-to-back -back doubles by ICC now, and now ICC would takes a one-to-nothing lead. It'll be Madison Carnes. So now with, with one out and a runner on second, Carnes will step in, hits the first pitch he sees, and it's going to be a ground out, six to three for the second out of the inning. Good job that time by the third, excuse me, shortstop Gerhardt to come in and and make sure the runner stayed at second. Number seven. As we go back Corey to the top Child. of the lineup here, and this will be Corey Childs coming to the plate. So we're gonna to try to adjust the uh, internet between innings. 
as is jumping in and out right now. As that first pitch across for a strike. ICC leading it one to nothing. And Childs is hit by a pitch. So Corey will, will head down. And number 15, Meg Sullivan. And now what will be Meg Sullivan? Sullivan rips one, it's off the glove. And the throw over to third is not in time. Actually, it was in time. She just was not standing on the base. And that's going to be a hit as that was just a hard hit line drive off the glove of the third baseman. And now this is going to be Samantha Conley coming to the plate. Number 11, Sam Conley. And now the Rangers, or excuse me, the Tigers wants to come out and talk this one over. Well, we're going to try to... Uh, we're going to take a break and see if we can figure out our issues with the live stream. Back with more right after this. This broadcast of ICC Athletics is being presented by the ICC Alumni Association, the Bank of Oklahoma, the ICC BSU, Choice Pond with locations in Tupelo and Fulton, Buddy Long and the Tupelo Coca-Cola Bottling Works, Food Giant, the ICC Foundation, your Etiwamba County Farm Bureau agent, Joey Cox, Little Caesars, Renaissance Bank, Sonic, and the ICC Wesley Foundation. And welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. Didn't really get enough time to try to adjust our internet there. And so ICC now with a pretty big opportunity to open up this ball game. As this is going to be Conley at the plate, takes us that first pitch low for a ball. So first pitch missing for a ball. That one across for a strike. Bases full of Indians. For Samantha Conley, who walked in her previous at bat, a base hit would be huge here for ICC as they lead it one to nothing. That pitch across for a strike. Nice job by Denton. And so we're waiting the pitch here. One, two is the count. Conley rips one, but it's foul, and only barely foul as it was ripped down the first baseline. And so, actually the Outfielder for Northeast, they were asking her to get the ball. She would not go get it. <laughs> and so they're going to have to send the first base coach all the way down there to get it. So Kyle Jordan, or excuse me, Kylie Jordan, she was just like, nope, not my job. Not going to do it. So we're going to try to break away in between innings. Hopefully it'll be a little while. As that pitch high gets away. And he's going to try to score the run, and they do. The pitch got away that time, and now ICC takes a 2-0 lead. You take a look at it on the Little Caesars replay, and the throw home not in time, and ICC now leads it 2 to nothing. So a wild pitch allows the run to score. That was Burns who scored on the wild pitch. And so now 2-0. Conley rips this one, but foul. Runners were able to advance to second and third. You got a lot of speed on the bases right now. Another wild pitch with Corey Childs at third could easily score another run for ICC. 
2-0 is the score. And there's a little blooper. Going to have to hurry, and the throw's not going to be in time. It's actually going to get away. That's going to allow two runs to score, and Conley's going to go to second. And so ICC gets two oh. runs. <laughs> So I'm thinking a hit plus an error. So that will be a RBI for Conley that scored Childs, who was hit by a pitch, and then Meg Sullivan was scored on the error. Number 19, Shelby Newsom. And so now ICC leads it. Big here in this one as they take a four to nothing lead, and this is gonna be Shelby Newsom coming to the plate. Newsom takes that first pitch for a strike. So four nothing is your score. That pitch in the dirt blocked up nicely. That pitch missing inside for a ball. So 2-1 now is the count. This pitch popped up. And the second stop, second, excuse me, the second baseman will stop it. And that will do it. But ICC able to put four runs on the board in the inning. A big inning for ICC as they lead it four to nothing as we'll take a break and try to get some things figured out here. Back with more right after this.
Number 15, Kylie Jordan. And welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. I think we're back now. Had to make a switch to the Verizon. As I believe we're back and of course unfortunately well maybe fortunately for ICC if we uh, go off the air I'm pretty sure coach Kirk will uh, gladly score four runs uh, each time we go off the air as there's one out after a ground ball to the first baseman by Brazil this is now gonna be Jordan at the plate That pitch in the dirt gets away, and that's the ball. So one and one now is the count. All right, so it appears that we are up and running after we had to uh, switch to Verizon. Is that pitch across for a strike? So I think we're kind of maybe back. I don't know. The joys of technology. And so one and two now is the count. Springfield getting set to deliver. A beautiful pitch, but a little too inside, I guess, for the umpire's liking as now the count evens up at two and two. We'll try to... Uh, Get you caught up on the scoring in between innings, possibly. So waiting for the pitch here. This pitch popped up, fouled back out of play. We'll stay at two and two. There is one out, nobody on here for the Tigers. Four to nothing is your score here in favor of ICC. This is number nine batter, Kylie Jordan, the right fielder who a while ago refused to go get the, <laughs> the uh, foul ball. Coach Clark had to run all the way down and get that one. Two balls, two strikes, one out, that pitch high, and now we go full. Springfield just a little late on that release there. She's got five strikeouts so far in the game. She struck out all three batters in the first, got a pair of strikeouts in the second, looking for her first strikeout here in the third. This pitch foul back and we'll stay at three and two. Nice at bat right now by Jordan. Battling to keep this at bat alive. So Springfield taking her time. Gets the signal from the dugout. Nobody on, three, two is the count. One out now and Springfield digging in. And she loses her. Just missing on the outside, and that's going to be the second walk of the game issued by Springfield. And now we go back to the top of the lineup here to Paige Deal. Deal in her first at bat of the day. She struck out looking. The first of five Renaissance Bank strikeouts on the afternoon here 
for Springfield. So now with a runner on second and one out. Conley wants to come out and talk to her pitcher here, kind of settle her down for a second. 4-0 is your score, ICC. We're in the top of the third inning with Northeast at the plate here in game one. This pitch foul back out of play for strike one. So having to go get some few extra balls over there on the side. We do apologize for the technical difficulties earlier in the broadcast as the internet signal from AT&T kind of fell out on us. So hopefully Verizon will be better for us here the rest of the afternoon. So 0-1 with one out. There's a ground ball, and nobody really at second, so there was only one play. The throw over to second was late, but the Indian was able to get one out there, so now there's two outs in the inning. So almost a break there for Northeast. Number as 19, Burns got that one in third, Conley. looked to second, but nobody was covering second base that time, so the only play was at first, so they avoided the Little Caesars double play there to end the inning. And now up is going to be Tarpley. She struck out, was thrown out two to three in her previous at bat. Trying to spark a two-out rally here for the Tigers in the top of the third, four to nothing. The ICC with the lead. So Springfield delivers that one, and the center fielder is going to go out there and catch a line drive. A big play there to end the inning as Corey Child showing off a little bit of her speed out there in center field to collect the third out of the inning. No runs, no hits, no errors. One was left on base here in the top of the third. 4 nothing is your score for ICC. Let's take a look back at the scoring recap for the second since we had all those technical difficulties with the Internet. Uh, Piper started the second inning off with a ground ball to the shortstop. She was thrown out at first. Then it was Bailey Springfield who doubled down the left field line. Burns followed with a double. The ball kind of floated, floated. The center fielder was not sure how far back she was, kind of stopped on it, couldn't adjust to the ball. It dropped safely to the ground, and then that scored Bailey Springfield to uh, give ICC the one nothing lead. Then Carnes grounded out to the shortstop. There was two outs in the inning, and Corey Childs was hit by a pitch as that put Burns and Childs on first and second with two outs. Then a single by Meg Sullivan. And that loaded the bases for ICC. Then Samantha Conley had an RBI single to score Burns from third. And then a throwing error allowed Childs to score as well. Then Sullivan came around, or excuse me, allowed Sullivan to score. And that's your scoring recap there in the second. Four nothing, ICC with the lead. and. And so now that we'll move to the bottom of the third inning. That'll be Hannah Williams, Mackenzie Piper, and Bailey Springfield all due up here in the bottom of the third. And Hannah nearly hit by a pitch, moved out of the way of that one. Ball one. So 4-0 is the score. 1-0 is the count here to Hannah Williams. Williams reached on a fielder's choice. Actually, she didn't reach. She grounded into a fielder's choice to end the first. That pitch across for a strike. One and one now is the count here on Hannah Williams, the left fielder. Williams, Piper, and Springfield all do up here. ICC leading 4-0 in the bottom of the third in game one. Shows bunt, pulls back on it. The pitch was high. For a ball, two and one now is the count. Catcher wants to go out there and talk to her pitcher. May have just been a little miscommunication on the play. Not a whole lot of conversation between Castillo and Denton. As she just goes out there, says a quick word, and heads back. So two and one now is the count here on Hannah Williams. As we said, she 
kind of just a little slow roller to second to end the inning as there's a ground ball. Second baseman gets it, throws over in time for the put out. Four to three for those of you that may be scoring at home. And this is going to be McKenzie Piper. McKenzie Piper. Piper 0 for 1 in the afternoon with a ground ball to the shortstop. ICC trying to pick up some of those insurance runs here in the bottom of the third. Of course, when we talk about those insurance runs, we've got to talk about our Itawamba County Farm Bureau agent, Joey Cox. For all your insurance needs, stop by and see Joey there on South Adams Street and Fulton, the former ICC All-American, proud to sponsor ICC Athletics. This pitch popped up. Third baseman's coming in and squeezes it for the put out for out number two. So quickly, two away now here in the bottom of the third. Number 21, Bailey Springfield. Now up is going to be Bailey Springfield, who doubled and scored a run. Part of that four-run third inning for the Indians. So Springfield trying to help her own cause here. And she is in the circle here in game one for ICC. And there's a rip. Center fielder going back and can't find it. Springfield is going to have her second double of the game. And a big hit there for the Indians as Springfield sent that one for a ride. And she has a double. A two-out double there for the Indians. Her second double of the game for Bailey Springfield. And now what will be the third baseman, Olivia Burns. Burns doubled in her at bat and scored a run. She also drove in a run on that double as well. Swings on the first pitch she sees, fouls back out of play for strike one. There's two outs in the inning. ICC trying to spark another two out rally, much like we saw in the bottom of the second where they played it four runs. Trying to do that here in the bottom of the third to pick up some of those insurance runs. Springfield doubled with two outs. She's at second. Is that pitch high for a ball to Olivia Burns. Burns, the anticipated starter in game two, playing third base here in the first game of the day. She claims Grenada, but I've got it on a pretty good source. She's from Coffeyville, Mississippi. Is that pitch high? And whenever I say a pretty good source, I talked to her dad at the last ball game. The Gore Roots go deep in Coffeyville, and he knew a lot of my family, and he says, that's where we're from. So, yeah, Grenada, Coffeyville, same difference. That pitch inside for a ball. 3-1 now is the count. It's basically like saying you're from Tupelo when you live in Morville. So, 3-1 is the count. There's two outs and a runner on second here for ICC. Burns pops this one up. Second baseman having a little bit of trouble here, but makes the acrobatic catch a little bit more dramatic than it probably should have been that time, but it does get the out. We're going to take a break as we've played three, ICC four, Northeast zero. We'll let you know how you can get some tickets to tomorrow's bluegrass con uh, concert. Be back with more right after this. Itawamba Community College presents the 22nd Annual Bluegrass and Gospel Concert benefiting the ICC Foundation on Saturday, March 3rd at the Davidson Event Center in Fulton. This year's performers include the Isaacs, Rhonda Vincent and the Rage, Aaron Wilburn, Christy Miller, and Doyle Lawson and Quicksilver. $20 general admission and $30 reserved seating can be purchased online at iccms.edu slash concert. Doors open at 2, music starts at 4. For more information, visit iccms.edu or call 862-8039. That's the ICC Bluegrass Grass and Gospel Concert on Saturday, March 3rd in Fulton. Gotta be hoops and wings. Nah, subs. Wings all day. How about a sub? Dude, wings. Nah, 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 nah. Really? You gotta have ice cold Coke. I'll drink to that. Now that's how it's done. At Food Giant, serving you is our number one priority. We offer the freshest produce, highest quality meats, tasty baked goods, and the best meats and cheeses in our deli department. At Food Giant, you'll always find a staff member eager to help you find exactly what you need. Freshness, variety, value. Shop Food Giant today with several locations in North Mississippi. Need money now? Get a choice pawn loan on things you already own, like guns, boats, campers, trailers, recreational vehicles, and just about everything else. Get a loan from Choice Pawn in Fulton and Tupelo. Get cash today. ChoicePawn.com. 
And welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. We move now to the top of the fourth inning, ICC, with a 4 to nothing lead here over Northeast. We do want to welcome those watching on Let'sGoICCTV.com. We apologize for the technical issues earlier. Internet just went a little crazy here in the ICC Foundation press box. As Bailey Springfield still in the circle here for ICC. Number eight. Wilson. So it'll be Wilson, Wallace, and Castillo. Castillo. I've said that name differently every time. So I apologize. But it'll be Wilson who struck out to end the first, leading things off here for the Tigers. Bailey Springfield still in the circle here for ICC. Shows butt, change up, hang up, four ball. Not necessarily a bad miss that time by Bailey as that pit, that bunt attempt may have caught the Indians by surprise. As corners are in now, middle of the infield at regular depth. They're shedding the player to pull it to the left in center field as that pitch across for a strike, even with the count now at one and one. One ball, one strike, no outs. Top of the fourth, ICC with a four to nothing lead here. And the first of two games this afternoon in Fulton. Couldn't catch up with the fastball. It's a cross strike two now on Wilson. Well, you're almost just waiting for the bomb to go off in this situation because you know these bats from Northeast, they've got some pop to them, and they can explode for many runs at any opportunity. And that one... Foul back, but strike three. And that is the sixth Renaissance Bank strikeout of the day for Bailey Springfield. And she is grooving nicely. Not only that, but she's two for two at the plate with a pair of doubles. Well, she come up and talk to me before the game, so she may have to start doing that from now on. Might have been her lucky charm. Or at least I'm going to claim it. So one out and nobody on now. Springfield, all-speed pitch, is going to miss for a ball. Well, ICC will be back in action as they hit the road to Hines tomorrow. Now, we will not broadcast that game, but Hines is, so we'll get you those links on letsgoicc.com as well as Twitter. That pitch across for a strike. Even the count now at one and one. Baseball will be at the road on the road at Sneed State. That will be available on the Blue Channel. Raphael Henry will have the call on that one on let's go icctv.com slash blue. Tennis will also be on the road at Heinz. No broadcast for those. Swung on. Couldn't catch up with the low heat. One and two now is the count here on Wallace. Wallace is the DP. She walked in her first at bat of the afternoon. So one and two now is the count here. There's one out. And nobody on here. So wetting the pitch. One-two pitch, and it's a beauty. Another Renaissance bank strikeout, and got her looking for the seventh strikeout of the game for Bailey Springfield. Number 18, Tiana Castillo. So now Castillo, Castillo will come to the plate with two outs and nobody on here. Bailey's struck out the side to start the first, trying to repeat that one here in the top of the fourth. Springfield set to deliver. First pitch missing outside for a ball. Well, she's been dancing around that strike zone all day today. Really just can't get that outside pitch called a strike. Is kind of smiling as she got the ball back from the catcher that time. As this is the catcher at the plate, Castillo looks at that one, check swing, misses low, four ball, 2-0 and now is the count. Jones is on deck, but the Indians wouldn't like to see her in the top of the fifth. I see, see trying to get a three-up, three-down inning here. So 2-0 is the count, two outs, nobody on here for the Tigers in the top of the fourth. Pitch coming. And that one across for a strike. Two and one now is the count here to Castillo. 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 I'll call her everything today. 
and I apologize. 2-1 now is the count. Ground ball off the knee of the th third baseman, and that's going to be an error. So E5 on the play will be charged to Burns, and a break there for the Tigers. So the Tigers now have a runner on first with two outs, and now Jones will come to the plate. Number one, Victoria Jones. So this is Jones coming to the plate here. She had a sacrifice bunt being brought to you by the ICC BSU in her previous at bat, but can't really get it going here. A sacrifice at least, because there's two outs in the inning. So she'll be trying to spark a two out rally here for the Tigers in the top of the fourth. That pitch across for a strike from Springfield. So Victoria Jones, I think I called her Leah Jones earlier, but it's Victoria Jones. The left fielder. And so 0 1 is the count with two outs and a runner on first. This pitch foul back. And 0 and 2 now goes the count. So a nice job by Springfield to jump ahead of Jones here. The runner reached on an error. Indians trying to get out of this inning with no damage done. Two outs, one on. 0-2 is the count here to the left fielder, Jones. That pitch hangs up a little high. One and two now goes the count. Gerhardt is on deck for the Tigers. One ball, two strikes, two outs, and a runner on first here for the Tigers. ICC leading it four to nothing here in the top of the fourth. So waiting the pitch here. Swung on and missed for strike three. Another Renaissance Bank strikeout by Bailey Springfield, and she has eight of those on the afternoon. ICC leads it 4 nothing. No runs, no hits, one error, one left on base as we move to the bottom of the fourth. Before we do that, let's hear a few words from our sponsors. We'll be back with more right after this. At Blue Giant, serving you is our number one priority. We offer the freshest produce, highest quality meats, tasty baked goods, and the best meats and cheeses in our deli department. At Blue Giant, you'll always find a staff member eager to help you find exactly what you need. Freshness, variety, value. Shop Blue Giant today with several locations in North Mississippi. I could get the extra most bestest with the most cheese and the most pepperoni for six bucks. Or I could get a pizza with less toppings for more money. Get the most cheese and most pepperoni for the nation's best price. Little Caesars Large $6 extra most bestest. Pizza, pizza. Need money now? Get a choice pawn loan on things you already own, like guns, boats, campers, trailers, recreational vehicles, and just about everything else. Get a loan from Choice Pawn in Fulton and Tupelo. Get cash today. ChoicePawn.com. And welcome back now as we shift to the bottom of the fourth inning. For ICC, it'll be the 9-1-2 batters coming up. It'll be Carnes, Childs, and Sullivan due up here for ICC. Carnes 0 for 1 in the afternoon with a ground out to short. Corey Childs 0 for 1. She was hit by a pitch, scored a run, and Meg Sullivan had a single scored on an error by Northeast. So Madison Carnes, the second baseman out of North Pontotoc High School, will dig in here for the Indians. ICC leads it four to nothing. We're in the bottom of the fourth, game one with Northeast. First pitch across, a beauty for a strike. So Carnes, as we said, a ground ball to the shortstop. For the second out of part of a four-run second inning. Indians would like to get a little bit of more breathing room here between them and the Tigers. That pitch high and outside. One and one now is the count here to Carnes. So one ball, one strike, no outs, nobody on as we start the bottom of the fourth inning with Madison Carnes, the second baseman. Carnes looks at that one across for a strike. One and two now is the count here on Carnes. 
Well, the story of the day has been Bailey Springfield. She's got eight Renaissance Bank strikeouts. She's two for two at the plate with a pair of doubles and a run scored. That pitch missing high. Two and two now is the count. We talked about Bailey. She's a reverse transfer out of Delta State. So 2-2 two, two is the count. Pitch coming. Swung on and missed for strike three. That is going to be the first strikeout of the day for Denton. That strikeout being brought to you by Renaissance Bank. RenaissanceBank.com. Renaissance Bank, understanding you, a proud sponsor of ICC Athletics here on Let's Go ICC TV.com. Of course, we remind you when we talk about Renaissance Bank, you want to tune in every Wednesday for our Renaissance Bank What a Play Wednesday. As that first pitch missing high for a ball to Corey Childs. Of course, this past week's What a Play Wednesday was a pair of walk off singles and extra innings by Hunter Neighbors. A rare feat to get a walk off hit maybe once, maybe twice in one season, but to have them twice in one series is impressive as that pitch misses for a. Ball, 2-0 and now is the count. Corey Childs, 0-1 for in the afternoon with the ground out to second. She was hit by a pitch and scored a run. So Corey trying to get the bat sparked here. Is that pitch missing low and outside for ball three? Well, you don't necessarily want to let Corey on base. One of the top base runners in the country. Ranks in the top 20 of stolen bases. And there's ball four. So she will get the free pass, this time by a walk. Last time she wore the pitch. And so now with a runner on first, and one out, Number this is going to be Samantha Conley, or excuse me, Meg Sullivan. Meg Sullivan! So Meg Sullivan will come to the plate here for the Indians. She's one for two on the afternoon. She does have a single and a run scored. She popped up to second after a pretty good pitch by Denton to jam her for the second out of the first inning. Sullivan takes a look at that pitch outside, clips the corner for a strike. 0-1 is the count here to Sullivan. 0-1. Sullivan, hard hit, ground ball. Third baseman finds it, gets it second, trying to turn two, can't do so. So a fielder's choice, but a good job by the Tigers to cut down Childs to take a little bit of speed off the bases. Couldn't quite turn the Little Caesars double play. As now up is going to be Sam Conley. Samantha has walked, had a single, drove in a run. The second run that scored on her single actually scored on the throwing error. So she's one for one with an RBI. Takes a look at that first pitch. Throw down to second is not in time. Gets away. They're going to try to get her to go to third, and she will be there. So the throw was actually up a little bit. And the runner was able to get all the way from second to third. So a stolen base for Sullivan, and then advance to third on the error. E2. So E2 on the advance. And so now the Indians have somebody in running scoring position here for the Indians. Boy, a base hit could be huge here for Conley. Could result in her second hit of the game and her second RBI could also push this lead out 5-0. That pitch, a beautiful one right down the middle for a strike. One and one now is the count. Two outs and a runner on third. ICC trying to pick up an insurance run here in the bottom of the fourth inning. They lead 4 to nothing here in game one against Northeast. That pitch, ooh, up, but called a strike. So one and two now. Yeah, a very wide strike zone. So it's pretty much from batter's box to batter's box and floats up and down from time to time. But as long as it's consistent on both teams, you really can't complain. And time is taken in this situation. One and two is the count here for Conley. Two outs and a runner on third. ICC leading four to nothing. Conley fouls this one out of play and will stay at one and two. So one and two is the count, two outs. A runner on third, ICC trying to pick up 
That insurance run at third to get a little bit more breathing room here. They lead it four to nothing. Ditton, though, trying to get out of this inning with minimum damage done. Ground ball, slow roller, second baseman going to have to hurry, and she doesn't get there. And the run scores. That was just a foot race that time, a great effort over at first. And Conley was able to win that foot race to score to score Number Sullivan. 19, Shelby Newsom. And a big time play there, a clutch extra effort single for Conley. And so now ICC leads it five to nothing. This is gonna be Shelby Newsom at the plate. She's one for two in the afternoon with a single. She popped up to second to end the second. Gives one a ride here, back, but the left fielder will camp underneath it for the put out. So an exciting out there as Newsom swings on the first pitch she sees, but it results in a fly out to end the inning. But the Indians do get one run on one hit, one error, and one left on base. We'll take a break. ICC leading it five to nothing here in game one after four complete. Back with more right after this on Let's Go ICC TV .com. This broadcast of ICC Athletics is being presented by the ICC Alumni Association, the Bank of Okolona, the ICC BSU, Choice Pond with locations in Tupelo and Fulton, Buddy Long and the Tupelo Coca-Cola Bottling Works, Food Giant, the ICC Foundation, your Etiwamba County Farm Bureau agent, Joey Cox, Little Caesars, Renaissance Bank, Sonic, and the ICC Wesley Foundation. Itawamba Community College presents the 22nd Annual Bluegrass and Gospel Concert benefiting the ICC Foundation on Saturday, March 3rd at the Davis Event Center in Fulton. This year's performers include the Isaacs, Rhonda Vincent and the Rage, Aaron Wilburn, Christy Miller, and Doyle Lawson and Quicksilver. $20 general admission and $30 reserved seating can be purchased online at iccms.edu slash concert. Doors open at 2, music starts at 4. For more information, visit iccms.edu or call 862-8039. That's the ICC Bluegrass and Gospel Concert on Saturday, March 3rd in Fulton. Quarter pound junior double cheeseburger with crispy golden tots for just $2.99. Makes me kind of want to do a double take. Double the beef. Uh, double the cheese. Double the smiles. Oh, yeah. For a limited time, get a quarter pound junior double cheeseburger and tots for just $2.99. This is how you sonic. And welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, as we now shift to the top of the fifth inning, ICC, with a 5 to nothing. Lead thanks to a great effort by Samantha Conley to beat the runner, or I should say, excuse me, beat the second baseman to first base. A great diving effort by the first baseman. Ball snuck through. Second baseman didn't have anybody to throw it to. Tried to outrun Conley to first. Conley found an extra Number gear five, and beat her by a half a step. Heart. That allowed the inning to continue and Meg Sullivan to score to give the Indians a 5-0 run. That scoring update being brought to you by Sonic here in Fulton. So Bailey Springfield still in the circle here for the Indians. Swings on the first pitch, popped up and out of play for strike one. So it'll be the seven, eight, nine batters due up here for Northeast in the top of the fifth inning. Gerhardt struck out to end the second. So the Indians trying to keep grooving here. They lead it five to nothing in game one against Northeast. The opening conference doubleheader for both teams. That pitch across for a strike. This game originally scheduled for Wednesday was rained out. And the MACJC rules is you've got to try to get in the game before your next conference game. And I know ICC is at Hines tomorrow. Don't know if Northeast has, they'll host Meridian tomorrow as that pitch is off the arm of Gerhardt, so she will trot down to first after wearing that pitch there. So the leadoff runner is on only for the second time in the game. Last time leadoff runner got on was back in the second when a six-pitch six walk was issued to Wallace. And so now Northeast trying to get something sparked Number here four, late in the contest as this is Brazil coming to the plate. She grounded out to the first baseman in her first at bat. Trying to find her first hit of the day. The sun is out. Something we have not been used to in about five years here in Fulton. Is that pitch missing low for a ball? There's been a lot of rain. Not only here, but all across North Mississippi. 
You got to give credit to the crown, grounds crew here at ICC to get the field ready for today. It's in pretty good con condition considering the almost six, maybe even closer to seven inches of rain we've got over the past seven to eight days. If not two weeks more like it, is that pitch across for a strike? I know Memphis had it forecast to rain four and a half, five inches here in Fulton over the past two days, and I want to say it's pretty close to that. So one and one is the count now here to Brazil. The first baseman, she grounded out two first in her first at bat. Waiting the pitch here. Looks at that one missing low. Two and one now is the count. That breeze cutting through every once in a while. It's, it's welcomed up here in the press box. Now it's a little chilly out there on the field. Not unpleasant though. Almost a Chamber of Commerce light day here at the ballpark. Is that pitch across for a strike? Ooh, Brazil not necessarily agreeing with that one. As she thought that one was up and in. Umpire called it for strike two. Two and two now is the count. As we said, it's a pretty big strike zone here in game one, but it's been that way for both teams. 2-2 two -two pitch coming here from Springfield. This pitch fouled back, and we'll stay at two and two. Is that one fouled over the top of the ICC Foundation broadcast booth? Hey, fans, remember, you still got time to get your tickets to tomorrow's ICC Bluegrass and Gospel Concert, benefiting the ICC Foundation. You can visit iccms.edu slash concert. That's iccms.edu slash concert. Few tickets will be sold at the door. Music, let's see, I think the door's open at three. Music starts at four. Visit iccms.edu for more information. Ground ball to the second baseman. There's one, there's only one. As they throw a little wild there. So Brazil will reach on the fielder's choice as it was four to six on the put out of Gerhardt and no error on the play. So fielder's choice, there you go. And so they'll get the lead runner. ICC boy would have loved to have seen Number that little 15, Caesars double play there, but just could not quite convert it. And now what will be Kylie Jordan? Jordan walked in her first at bat of the afternoon. She is batting in that nine spot. That pitch finds the inside corner for a strike. Well, Springfield has consistently gone for that inside corner all afternoon, and she has gotten it. 0-1 is the count with one out and a runner on first here for the Tigers. ICC leads it 5 to nothing, top of the fifth inning. That pitch missing low and outside. He was the count now at 1-1. One and one. If anybody would like to donate some blinds to the ICC softball press box, I will not argue with that as I'm trying to slide back further and further to avoid the sun as it continues to set here in Fulton. 1-1 one, one pitch coming. And that one across for a strike. 1-2 and two now is the count here on Jordan. That's Brazil over on first, who reached on a fielder's choice, urging on Jordan here at the plate. The number nine batter. Then we'll go back to the top of the lineup with Deal. And that pitch, ooh, just missing. You heard the oohs and ahs out of the crowd from the ICC faithful below us here. They thought that was a strike. Two balls, two strikes, one out, and a runner on first here for the Tigers. Good looking pitch, but the umpire has not been given that pitch today to Springfield. So the 2-2 pitch coming here from Bailey. This pitch popped up, but it's gonna get out of play. Meg Sullivan will give it a chase as it lands over in the bullpen. So two and two now. Stays the count with one out and a runner on first. Springfield has eight Renaissance Bank strikeouts so far here in game one. Would love to find number nine here to get that second out of the inning. Five nothing ICC with the lead, top of the fifth. Two two pitch coming from Springfield. And there it is. 
Got her looking, the ninth Renaissance Bank strikeout of the day. And Springfield. Going to be putting her name in the hat for Pitcher of the Week. Three, she continues Paige this. Deal. As we now go back to the top of the lineup here, this is going to be Paige Deal. Deal 0 for 2 in the afternoon with a strikeout. She grounded out to third in her previous at bat. So two outs and a runner on first. Infield is in. Outfield is kind of in. This pitch popped up. And Springfield will get it for the put out. And that will do it there as Springfield retires the batter on the pop up and ICC leads it five to nothing here as we head to the bottom of the fifth. It'll be the five, six, seven batters due up for ICC. Williams, Piper and Springfield. We'll find out how they do as so we'll take a break and be back with more right after this on letsgoicctv.com. I love these soft pretzel twists. They're so soft and salty, I like to sample them. That was a tongue twister. Here's another one. Peter Piper picked a pack of perfect pretzels. Hold up, your last name is Piper? Try a new warm and buttery soft pretzel twist with the Sonic Fruit Fizz. This is how you Sonic. Need money now? Get a choice pawn loan on things you already own, like guns, boats, campers, trailers, recreational vehicles, and just about everything else. Get a loan from Choice Pawn in Fulton and Tupelo. Get cash today. ChoicePawn.com. This broadcast of ICC Athletics is being presented by the ICC Alumni Association, the Bank of Okolona, the ICC BSU, Choice Pawn with locations in Tupelo and Fulton. Buddy Long and the Tupelo Coca-Cola Bottling Works, Food Giant, the ICC Foundation, your Etiwamba County Farm Bureau agent, Joey Cox, Little Caesars, Renaissance Bank, Sonic, and the ICC Wesley Foundation. And welcome back, a new pitcher in the game here for Northeast as we have a choice pond pitching change. It's Darcy Gibson. A freshman pitcher out of Marshall Academy. She went to, she's from Holly Springs as she takes over here in the circle for Northeast. She'll be greeted by Hannah Williams and she hits her. So her first pitch is, hits Hannah. So Hannah will get the free pass down to first. And this will be, so we'll have a pitch runner coming into the situation. Yes, it is. As the runner. Runner at first base will be Jojo Vasquez. Yep, this is going to be Joanna Vasquez or Joe Vasquez or Jojo, whatever you want to call her. As Jojo will take over at first as a runner for Williams. Jojo, a freshman. She's out of South Haven, Mississippi. Went to South Haven High School. Number 18, McKenzie Piper. So McKenzie Piper will dig in here for the Indians. 5-0 is your score, ICC. We're in the bottom of the fifth inning. Indians trying to continue to build on this lead. Shows butt, pulls back, takes it for a ball. Vasquez got pretty good speed over there at first. So this is going to be Piper, who's 0-2 for 2 on the afternoon. She's got a ground out to short and a pop up to third on her resume. Swings to the first pitch she sees and that's a line drive out to center field. Ball got away from the center fielder and the runner is going to advance to third and Piper will head to second. So a single and an error there for Piper. And score that E9, or excuse me, E8 on the error after the ball popped out of her hand and got away, they'll switch the ball as it rolled out to the outfield. So E8 allows the runners to advance in scoring position, and this is gonna bring Bailey Springfield to the plate. Bailey's been a tough out for Northeast this afternoon. Bailey Springfield! And she's got a pair of doubles to her credit. And so she will dig in here with no outs, runners on second and third. Vasquez running in place of Williams. Piper, who just singled, both those advance in scoring position after the error on the outfielder. That first pitch missing low for a ball. Ball one. So Springfield trying to 
get things going here for the Indians. No outs, runners on second and third. We're in the bottom of the fifth inning, five nothing. ICC with the lead. And they may elect to put her on instead. They're just gonna call time. So Springfield will await her turn at the plate here. Two for two with a pair of doubles and a run scored. Springfield takes a look at that pitch. Missing outside for a ball. 2-0 now is the count. Don't know if they may be going for the unintentional intentional walk here of Springfield. So Bailey with a 2-0 count. Looks at that one low in the dirt. And now 3-0 is the count here on Springfield. And so they're going to come out and talk to the pitcher here. And Springfield is going to jog over to talk to Coach Kirk along with Vasquez and Piper. Home plate umpire going to stroll down to third to kind of break up the huddle here for ICC. And interesting that he broke up ICC instead of the pitcher's conference. So the runners will go back, and now Northeast will break their huddle, and now time is taken by the Tigers. Time out on the field. Let's take it with them. ICC with a 5 to nothing lead here. Let's hear a word from all of our sponsors, and we'll be back with more right after this on Let'sGoICCTV.com. This broadcast of ICC Athletics is being presented by the ICC Alumni Association, the Bank of Okolona, the ICC BSU, Choice Pond with locations in Tupelo and Fulton, Buddy Long and the Tupelo Coca-Cola Bottling Works, Food Giant, the ICC Foundation, your Etiwamba County Farm Bureau agent, Joey Cox, Little Caesars, Renaissance Bank, Sonic, and the ICC Wesley Foundation. And welcome back now as we come out of the timeout. ICC with a five to nothing lead. 3-0 is the count here to Bailey Springfield. Bailey, as we said, two for two with a pair of doubles and a run scored in the contest. Springfield taking the whole way that time, and they're going to give her the free pass to first. So, as I said, maybe that unintentional, intentional walk to Springfield after they fell behind 3-0. And now it's going to be Olivia Burns coming to the plate here for the Indians. Number three, Olivia Burns. So, Burns will dig in. She is one for two on the afternoon with an RBI. So, Burns trying to keep things going here for the Indians. Ground ball is going to get through. One run will score. They're going to ask Piper to score. Then there's going to be a throw to third. Throw to second is in time. So it's going to be a single for Burns. That scores two runs. Tried to advance to second on the throw to third. And they were able to get the runner at second. And now ICC leads it 7-0. And this is going to be number 30, a pinch hitter, Macy Cox. Macy Cox coming into bat here for the Indians. And if the Indians find a way to push across this run at third, we'll call it an early game here in game one. So Macy Cox, the left fielder, or excuse me, the infielder slash pitcher, a freshman out of Troy, Tennessee. Number 30, Macy Cox. And so Macy Cox will come in in this pitch hit situation. Swings the first pitch she sees. They're going to try to come home with it. And she's safe. And that'll do it. ICC wins game one by the final score. And ICC wins it eight to nothing with a three run bottom of the fifth inning. We're going to take a break and come back with the Renaissance Bank postgame show. ICC takes game one by the final score of eight to nothing. Ever since you got that license, you haven't stopped moving forward. Now that you're older and on the move, you need a safer place to keep your money. We get it. A student checking account frees you up with things like mobile check deposit to take care of that check from grandma without having to stop at a bank. Pay with your phone when you're out with friends. And stop worrying about ATM fees. 
we'll pay you back for those. Worry about your future, not your money. And know that we'll stick with you, wherever you go. Renaissance Bank. Understanding you. Member FDIC. Itawamba Community College presents the 22nd Annual Bluegrass and Gospel Concert benefiting the ICC Foundation on Saturday, March 3rd at the Davis Event Center in Fulton. This year's performers include the Isaacs, Rhonda Vincent and the Rage, Aaron Wilburn, Christy Miller, and Doyle Lawson and Quicksilver. $20 general admission and $30 reserved seating can be purchased online at iccms.edu slash concert. Doors open at 2, music starts at 4. For more information, visit iccms.edu or call 862-8039. That's the ICC Bluegrass and Gospel Concert on Saturday, March 3rd in Fulton. And welcome back to the Renaissance Bank postgame report. ICC wins it 8 to nothing in five innings here in game one against Northeast. ICC picks up their first conference win of the season, and that was in a big, impressive way there in the first game, run ruling the rivals of Northeast, trying to uh, get our final line here. And it goes without saying, our sonic star of the game is going to be Bailey Springfield. Bailey at the plate went two for two with a pair of doubles and a run scored. She also walked. But inside the circle, Bailey gives up a no-hitter this afternoon. She struck out nine. ICC did commit one error. Northeast committed three. So the final nine, Northeast, no runs, no hits, three errors. For ICC, eight runs on nine hits. One error to pick up the win here. Let's take a look at the final stats for ICC because, as always, these stats being brought to you by Sonic here in Fulton. Corey Childs, 0 for 1 on the day. She was hit by a pitch, scored a run, and Walt was put out on a fielder's choice. Meg Sullivan was 1 for 3. She scored a run. That was scoring on an error. She actually scored twice as she reached on a fielder's choice, stole a base. Samantha Conley, she went two for two with a walk and two RBIs. Shelby Newsom, one for three with a single. Uh, had Hannah Wilson reaching on a fielder's choice. She also was hit by a pitch. Her runner was JoJo Vasquez. She scored a run. Piper was one for three on the afternoon. She singled, advanced on an error, scored a run. Bailey Springfield, as we said, our sonic star of the game, went two for two with a walk. And you had Olivia Burns with a single and a two-run scored on that single. She also had a double that drove in a run. She scored on a wild pitch. She went two for three on the afternoon. You had Madison Carnes, 0 for two with a strikeout. And then it was Macy Cox reaching on a fielder's choice to get the last run in to force the run rule there. Victory for the Indians in game one. Eight to nothing, your final ICC with the win. We're going to step away and come back with game two in about 20, maybe 30 minutes here on Let's Go ICCTV.com. Back with more right after this. Itawamba Community College presents the 22nd Annual Bluegrass and Gospel Concert benefiting the ICC Foundation on Saturday, March 3rd at the Davis Event Center in Fulton. This year's performers include the Isaacs, Rhonda Vincent and the Rage, Aaron Wilburn, Christy Miller, and Doyle Lawson and Quicksilver. $20 general admission and $30 reserved seating can be purchased online at iccms.edu slash concert. Doors open at 2, music starts at 4. For more information, visit iccms.edu or call 862-8039. That's the ICC Bluegrass and Gospel Concert on Saturday, March 3rd in Fulton.